We were wrong about Mick Schumacher. This video is brought to you by the lovely people at ExpressVPN. Before Silverstone, I was thinking, is this guy even worthy of Formula 1? I mean, he's doing so badly. He hasn't even scored any points. And then maybe his name, Schumacher, has just been carrying through all these tough, tough times. Like before Silverstone, he hadn't got any points and he just kept smashing up that Haas car over and over again. Then in 2021, he did well considering the car, but I guess our perception of Mick was skewed due to the fact that his teammate was Nikita Maspin, who was pretty much just a living garbage can. The guy couldn't drive anything, he just always spun. But also remember, Mick did have the most amount of crash damage during the 2021 season, so he wasn't doing too great. And now it's midway through the 2022 season. I think a lot of people's perception of Mick Schumacher has changed quite a bit. You see, before Silverstone, he seemed pretty inconsistent, which is a complete opposite of how he was in Formula 2. In that junior formula, he wasn't always the quickest, but he was always the most consistent, and that's why he won the championship that year. And now in F1, it's kind of like he doesn't have the performances or the consistency. A prime example of this is when he T-boned Sebastian Vettel in Miami and cost himself his first F1 point. I'm sure Vettel was very happy with him. And you see in F1, you just can't be making mistakes like this. I bet you if his name was Nikita Mazpin rather than Mick Schumacher, we'd all be saying we should have got rid of him a long, long time ago. But again, his name is carrying him through this Formula 1 season. But then in Silverstone, Mick did something incredible. Although in qualifying, it was classic Mick Schumacher and he qualified P19 only ahead of Lance Stroll. And Mick Schumacher was out-qualified by Goat Tifi and Alex Albon, who were arguably in the slowest car this year, the Williams. But due to a few unfortunate events, it seemed like Mick Schumacher was able to make his way through the field. And by the end of the Grand Prix on the final lap, he was battling Max Verstappen. Yes, the world champion Max Verstappen. Granted, Max did have quite a bit of damage, but still, he was pretty much fighting him all the way to the finish line. And then finally, Mick got his first points in Formula 1. Günther Steiner did also say that once Mick got his first points, he'd get a confidence boost and maybe do even better the next weekend. Before I continue, let me talk to you a little bit about ExpressVPN. A VPN or a virtual private network masks your actual location and makes the website you're using think you're somewhere else. There are a few benefits that I use ExpressVPN for. The main one is that it funnels all your data through ExpressVPN's private servers. This means that no hackers can access your information, which they can pretty easily do without a VPN as your information is unencrypted. Another great use for ExpressVPN is that if you can't watch F1 in your country, you can just switch over to the UK or the US and watch F1 TV. Saying this, it also unlocks geo-locked content, for example, on Netflix. If I can't watch something on there, I can just switch over to US Netflix and get loads of extra shows. So if that sounds good to you, use my link below and get three months free of ExpressVPN. So let's move on to Austria. I also met Mick in Austria. Look, it's us. Pretty cool, I know. On Friday in qualifying, he put it P7 on the sprint race grid. Now, this is pretty good by Mick's standards. He set himself up well for the sprint race on Saturday. Unfortunately, though, in the sprint, he moved down to P9. But this result doesn't really reflect his sprint race. He drove incredibly. He had an insane battle with Lewis Hamilton. It's almost like he was racing as his dad. It also seems like Mick is making a habit of racing world champions very hard. And it's weird to think that a couple races ago, Mick was struggling to get any points. And now he's literally fighting world champions in the points. What? But after the race is where everyone's perception of Mick Schumacher kind of changed. You see, in a post-race interview, which I actually watched live there, he was complaining about how the team didn't let him pass Kevin Magnussen because he thought he was quicker than his teammate. And then this eventually cost him the points in the sprint race and moved him down to P9. And Schumacher was arguing that if they let him go through, then they would have both gotten points instead of just Kevin. And Mick definitely didn't sound happy in this interview. And a lot of people on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram are all saying this kind of sounds like Mick is becoming a bit of a villain and he's starting his villain arc. Now, I can't lie, I kind of 100% agree with this. His tone and his sort of facial expressions really tell us something. It's almost like, damn, I'm willing to do anything to get past Kevin and get points. This sort of confidence can be good. Now look at Max Verstappen. He sort of has this mentality as well. Yeah, I kind of feel like he always wants revenge and he's always angry. And he's pretty aggressive and pretty ruthless and obviously he's won a world championship. But I think with Mick, now that he's got these points, he's kind of got a lot more confidence. And this means he's able to push harder and extract more from the car. Although with this confidence, I think he could become a little bit unlikable. I know a lot of people already love Mick Schumacher. He kind of reminds me of a golden retriever. I don't know if that makes any sense. But to be fair, I'm shocked that people are surprised that he's doing well this season. I mean, look, in every other category he's done, he's really stepped it up on the second half of his second season in that category. And at this rate, if he keeps it up, he could be beating Kevin Magnussen in the standing. I mean, look, I rate Kevin really highly. I think he's a pretty good midfield driver. But Mick could beat him this season. I won't be surprised if he does. Sorry, I haven't even mentioned the actual Austrian Grand Prix where he finished P6. That's insane for Mick Schumacher. But yeah, in 
my opinion, I think Mick Schumacher could become a bit like Sebastian Vettel, his mentor. Because remember, Sebastian was probably one of the most hated drivers ever in his prime. And maybe Mick could fall down his path as well. Although I have a feeling Sebastian would probably steer him away from this path. Now, another question a lot of people are asking is, will Mick Schumacher ever go to Ferrari? Because he is a Ferrari junior driver after all. Because I was seriously skeptical after the past few seasons. Like, will he ever win a championship with Ferrari? I don't think so. Because right now, Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc have a pretty strong driver lineup there. And I think they've probably been off Carlos Sainz and Mick Schumacher. But here's what I think about Ferrari. I think they're showing loads of interest in Arthur Leclerc, Charles Leclerc's younger brother, who's currently in Formula 3, who I actually also saw in Austria. Didn't get a photo with him, though. They seem pretty hell-bent on getting him to F1. I think they're trying to go for a double duo of Leclerc brothers. I don't know, maybe think it's good luck or something. But yes, after only one interview, I think Mick Schumacher could become a little bit of a villain. That is my opinion. You can probably disagree with me in the comments below. Be sure to do that. And I know I said the same thing about George Russell and it kind of hasn't come true, but who knows? It could come true tomorrow. It's Formula One after all. Anything can happen. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this one right here about Daniel Ricciardo leaving McLaren. Could it happen? Ugh, I'm wearing my McLaren top. Hopefully it doesn't. I love Daniel. <gasps> oh, check it. You'll love it. Trust, trust me. What? Trust me. Yeah, trust me.